Hey everyone, it's Snack from Crow's Nest, and I'm here with the results from Deck Devastator 7. If you're curious about that tournament, um, I did a video on the top 16 deck lists. There's also two live streams you can check out on the channel. If you go to the live tab, you can find all those streams and all the action from this past weekend. But today we're going over the stats and some interesting uh, interesting observations that bear out in the data from this tournament. So first of all, as always, I have the breakdown of what decks were entered by all the players. We had 100, 100, yeah. we had 169 players, um, and 30 of them were on Value Turbo, which made up 17%. Uh, Black Wings were 16% with 27 players. Frogs had 25% or 25 players at 14.8%. And as you can see, that was by far the three biggest, but we did have sizable contingents of people playing some other decks. We had 5.3% Glad Beast, 9 people, 8 people on Light Sworn, 7 Fairy Players, 7 Machina, 7 Quick Draw, 6 Zombie, 5 Amaryllis, 5 Dragon Turbo, 5 Hero Beat, 4 Diva Hero, 4 X Saber, 3 Synchro Cat, 2 Dark Calling, 2 Dragon, not Dragon Turbo, that is, 2 Neospatian, 2 Spellcaster decks, uh, one alien deck, one Karaz deck, one Rhinos, winged Rhinos, that is. One Six Sam, one Spaceships, one Supe deck, one Uri deck, and one Volcanic deck. So, those are all the decks that were entered. And uh, we have some other observations coming up about the decks and all that. But first, something I did this time is that I thought it would be neat to look at how people who have topped events prior have done in... Deck Devastator 7 specifically. So for this, I used uh, the edisonformat.net events archive here, where you can look at all the events. Like if we go to uh, Deck Devastators here, this one is Deck Devastator 7, but I didn't include Deck Devastator, Deck Devastator 7 in the results for this. It was only events that took place prior to this, but yeah. So using that only online tops counting, because that's what's in the database. Um, I looked at how many tops does a player, does someone have, how many players have that many tops and what were their combined win rate. So for example, there are 123 people with zero tops and they had a win rate of 47%. Um, and as you can see, as the number of tops go up, so does the win rate. And I thought that was interesting to see. It just kind of confirms that these people who have multiple online tops, either they're trying harder and they're playing more serious decks or they're more skilled. Uh, so as you can see, we had one player with nine tops and they had a win rate of 87%. We had four players with seven tops and they combined to have a win rate of 68%. So it's kind of cool to see how the line goes up as the more online tops you have. And, uh, here is like a more rigorous version of this where they're all weighted correctly because I have all 123 people included in this zero tops. And so because they're weighted more correctly, you can actually get a real trend line and see that <clears throat> the win rate truly does increase as you get more tops. So then I want I thought it'd be interesting to look at individual deck statistics. <clears throat> so here on the right is a simple one where I took all the previous tops prior to Deck Devastator 7 um, that were of all the players who entered with a given deck. So let's say they were combined 37 tops by Blackwing players and 37 people played Blackwing. It would be one top per player, right? And then I looked at the top three decks because as we discussed earlier, only Blackwing, Value, and Frogs had a really large sample size in terms of the amount of players playing the deck. And I thought it was interesting that Frogs actually had 1.24 tops per play person playing the deck. So even though there are 25 people playing Frogs, on average, they had more than one top per player. I thought that was very interesting. Value, it was exactly one. So even though there were 30 players, there were 30 tops among those 30 players. And then Blackwing at 0 0.7, which is still very respectable. And then something else I looked at is what was the win rate of people who had previous tops compared to the people who didn't have previous tops split into only those decks. So 
for frogs, people with tops did better than people who didn't have tops prior. And the same is true for Vayu. But for Blackwing, it was kind of the inverse where we had some people who didn't have tops actually performed very well in this tournament. So for that reason, the Black Wings actually did better than people who didn't have tops. So it's just kind of interesting. I don't think there's too much to take away from this graph. It's more descriptive of just what happened at this one tournament. So I don't think it's like, oh, Black Wing players are so unskilled or anything. But it does show over here in this graph that I think skilled players are drawn more toward Frog than they are toward Black Wing. Uh, players who have lots of talent are more likely to pick frogs than they are to load up with black wings. And that's true not it not only if you just average all the tops, but I also looked at um I also looked at yeah the, the topper percentage over here where forty eight percent of people who loaded up frogs had a top. Thirty six percent thirty six percent of people who loaded up with black wings had a top and at least one. And 29% of Blackwing players had one top. Anyway, if you don't care about any of that, I have some more basic stuff here. I just did the win rates for each deck list here. Um, I only did decks that had at least five players. And uh, Vayu had a 57% win rate, the highest. And then Blackwing, then Light Sworn, Hero Beat Frog, Glad Beast, Fairy, Machina, and Zombie. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of a slow decline here. Uh, and since this is a tournament, it's kind of hard to have a high win rate because most people are going to lose and get eliminated. So, yeah. Just because these decks aren't above 50% doesn't mean they're trash. <laughs> uh, and then here's the conversion rates in terms of which decks made top 8 compared to how many people entered with that deck. Dragon Turbo, 40% of the people who entered with Dragon Turbo made top 8 because there were 5 people and 2 of them made top 8. So... Speaking of Dragon Turbo, actually, if you go back to this graph, you see where Frog has 1.24 people, 1.24 tops per player. Dragon Turbo is actually above three. So a lot of the really, really, really skilled players love playing Dragon Turbo. I think it's a challenging deck, and that might be why they're drawn to it. But very small sample size, so I didn't include them on this graph. Um, back to the conversion rates, yeah. So two out of the five people who played Dragon Turbo made top eight, and then you have the more realistic ones. I think nine people played, yeah, nine people played Glad Beast, and one of them made top eight. So 11% of the Gladiator Beast players made top eight, 8% 8 of Frog players, 6.7% of Vayu players, and 3.7% of Blackwing players. So then um, let's get into some card stats, like individual card stats. So I have all the, let's uh, hide that. And I have all the um, deck lists over here for each player, all the top 16, that is. And on the left here, I have just some general info, like here I have like what percent of the copies are in the side and how many copies are in the main, how many copies are in total, side plus main. And I found it interesting because in previous months, I think there was a discussion of D.D. Crow losing popularity, but here, D.D. Crow was the most common card in the entire, of all the top 16 decks, there was no card that saw more copies than D.D. Crow, and 100% of them were in the side deck, not in the main. So D.D. Crow, more common than even Kaya's or Dimensional Prison. <clears throat> so that's very interesting to me. And then the other thing that I took out of here was that Royal Oppression seemed to have a huge resurgence. Uh, where Royal Oppression is played more than Bottomless Chapel. And that was partially because even Dragon Turbo players are side decking Royal Oppression, and we had two of those in the top uh, top eight. I think we had, and I'm including top 16 for this, for these stats, so it's more than just top eight, but yeah. Royal Oppression seems to kind of be making a comeback, but almost exclusively as a side card, because as you can see, 80% of copies of Royal Oppression were in the side. We only had four in the main and 20 total. So even... I know that even Blackwing and Vayu players, Vayu players are sometimes not maining any copies of Oppression. They're siding both. Um, or the Blackwing players are siding both. So it's kind of interesting to see that it's become more of a side card than a main deck card. But most people are putting two in the side if they're putting it in at all. So, And those decks that can play Oppression in the side are having success and making it into top 16. So now that that's uh, covered... 
think we can move on to individual decks to uh, statistics. So we had five Amaryllis decks and four of them were standard. One of them was playing quick draw. Uh, the regular Amaryllis had a 45% win rate, regular quick draw, or quick draw Amaryllis had a 0% win rate, but just one person, of course. Uh, for Black Wings, we had 25 people load up with kind of a regular Black Wing and then two people on Virus Black Wing. They had about the same percent win rate. For Dragon Turbo, six people played it. They all played the same version, 62% win rate across all Dragon Turbo players. For Fairies, we had two Chaos, two Standard Fairy, two Valhalla Fairy, and one Ancient Gear Fairy. Um, Chaos did the best with a 50% win rate. Valhalla did poorly with 20% win rate. The other two had 40% win rate. For Frogs, we had 12 Hero Frog, 7 Avarice Frogs, uh, 2 Combo, or 2 Monarch Frogs, like kind of like Standard Frog Monarch, and then 1 Combo Frog, 1 Machina Frog, 1 Plant Frog, and 1 Aggro Frog. I didn't know how to describe that one, but it was like kind of a Aggro Bomb Frogs. And uh, Hero Frogs had about a 50% win rate. Avarice Frogs had a 57% win rate. Frog Monarchs at 40%. Combo and Machina both at 50%. And Plant Frogs had a 25% win rate. Aggro Frogs did not win a game. For Glad Beasts, they're all kind of the same. And we had 9 players, 46% win rate across them all. For Hero Beat, we had 3 Diva Hero Beat. And then two decks that were not running diva they were just on like gemini lancer or snowman eater or something of that sort the diva hero beat had a 42 percent win rate and the traditional had 57. light sworn we had five playing a pure light sworn three playing christia sworn and the pure light sworn had a 50 54 percent win rate the fairy sworn had 40 percent win rate for machina Three standard Machina, one Machina Cat, one Jinzo Machina, one Rock Machina, and one Roid Machina. Um, standard had a 56% win rate, Single Cat had a 33% win rate, Jinzo had a 25% win rate, and the others did not win a game. For Quick Draw, we had six standard Quick Draw lists and one Hero, hero Quick Draw plant. And uh, the standard version had a 50, 59% win rate across all of them, and then the other one had a 40% win rate. On to Vayu, we had 27 people loading up a pretty standard Vayu list with a 57% win rate. Two of them were playing like a virus version with a 69% win rate, actually doing very, very well. And uh, zombies did not win a game. <laughs> uh, the zombie Vayu, that is. And then here we have... Diva Zombies, three people. Plant Zombies, two people. Hero Zombies, one person. Hero Zombies actually did the best. That was Jake XO, very talented player. And the three Diva Zombies averaged out to a 43% win rate. So I don't know if there's anything I haven't covered yet. I thought this data was pretty neat. I also think it's interesting that uh, it seems like frogs are the deck that... Um, these really talented players, players with a big online history, enjoy playing frogs. And especially with the new Dream Frog version, with Fitchborg, Avarice, uh, three, dupe, three Dupe Frogs, uh, Salvage, I feel like frogs are a deck that gives you a lot of options, kind of similar to Dragon Turbo, actually. Both of those decks can kind of, you have so many options on every given turn. And I think that skilled players are drawn to those kind of decks because they like having the expression of being able to make choices and be rewarded or punished for those choices depending on how valid of a choice they make. And so I think that's some interesting data to have. But I think that's pretty much all for Deck Devastator 7. Uh, let me know in the comments if I missed anything, if there's anything you would like to know that I didn't uh, mention. And other than that, uh, make sure you stay subscribed. I will be doing a video on uh, broad uh, Edison data across all the top eights for all the online events, not just Deck Devastators events, but all of them. So if you're interested in that, uh, stay tuned and adios.